um, just to get us back on track because we're not past issues and concerns yet. Um, so the takeaway is, Tom, if you could follow up on library use and municipal building use, the two. Um, it sounds like that committee could reach out to Gene. Whoever uh, the person that would reach out to me is on the rail trail committee. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. We can discuss more later. Yeah, I think it is the fact that there are multiple groups trying to meet there. It might have been a scheduling issue. Yeah. Um, okay, well, one night conflict doesn't constitute bigger issues. So maybe that, hopefully, that's the case, is that it was just one night. Um, yeah, any other issues or concerns? Um, just one other thing that Tom and I have been talking with the state to get clarification on the buyout process. And the clarification we got was really good, but it was not what I expected it to be because it is not what it was before. Um, two, point, two points that are important ones is one, is that the state has funding for the 100 year floodplain? Um, any house that wants to buy out in that group um, could begin an application process. Uh, and any group outside of that, that other budget doesn't have funding currently, and it would be state funding. The other big takeaway is that anyone who wants buyout has to reach out to us and we initiate with the state, which is different than what than what I, I had understood for months now. Um, so that's an important clarification. Right, and right now there are three properties that come to mind that have reached out to the town recently um, that we need to follow up on. Um, but that being said, all that being said, the fact that that sheet where the state was going to follow up and see if and initiate what we thought at the time initiate reaching out and determining who is going to proceed and who isn't and start starting that ball rolling that doesn't seem to be happening they were they just sent out informational packets packets from what i understand so i think we should take that original list and we should reach out to each person and say if they're ask if their interest is if they're still interested and, um, you know, be really clear about what we look, know the process to be now. Um, it's a little, um, so I think we were told to send everybody to Stephanie Smith at the state level, and that's what we did, right? And we got a list back, everything was looking good. Um, now we're finding out um, that an application has to come in to the municipality. Um, that application form we've never received. Well, no, 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 the, they just have to reach, the way that Brian wrote it, they just have to reach out to us and the uh, VEM will help with the application. I'll come together with the full synopsis. And so I'm working with Cambridge, who's already has four in the process. Like get a step one, step two, step three, step four for both the municipality, but also the homeowners. So that like hopefully within a couple of days, we'll just streamline this and get all interested parties moving right away. Um, and that there was a disconnect between what was going to happen at the state level versus what was supposed to happen. And now we just have to like snap it into shape and get it going. And so by the end of the week, I'm sure we'll have something to put what together. Are the deadlines for people to... I don't think there is one, at least at this time. I think it's like it was like yeah. two years from. I don't know. Like, is but it two years? It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be kind of first come first serve on the funding piece. There is a deadline from FEMA, and the FEMA deadline to initiate was a long time. It was like two years. The funding piece from the state. Yeah, one of those funds is not currently funded. One of them's already depleted. Yeah. But there is a bill on the floor to pray. Right. Yeah. Which they're cautiously optimistic might pass. Yeah. But that brings up another question. The original plan was the town could opt to have 
the state act on its behalf in terms of securing the appraisals and we demolishing the buildings and all that stuff. Is there anything that we need to proactively take an action on to no, make sure they do that? I don't okay. think so. That's not the way it sounded. It sounded like we needed to initiate the application and that the state will be involved in moving things and anything that needs to happen, the state will be involved in managing what needs to happen with us, meaning they'll guide us in what we need to do. That was the way yeah. I interpreted. Plans. I think they backed off on they will take care of everything. Correct. Too. Yeah. The town will take care of everything and will help. Let's put it. Yeah. There is a that sounds a little different than what the initial assessment was. It, was. it sounds like they didn't get the funding. It's there. not like the state to promise something they're not going to do. So this is the the hundred year flood plan, the nineteen eighty four maps as it's from eighty oh eighty seven okay yeah it is. it is more recent than that that's great. Right. No, oh. was that FEMA and then not DEM was looking at properties that flooded, not necessarily at the flood mountains. Correct. So uh, everything within the hundred year flood plan goes to the state. Well, everything outside of that hundred year flood plan goes to the state. Right. What, what it's, it's, the, it's the hundred year flood plan well, stuff that is funded through FEMA. The state level stuff is currently not funded. I, I'm, we can be optimistic that it will be funded, but as yeah. it currently stands, there's funding for buyouts in the hundred year flood right. plan, which is woefully out of date. I think the most <laughs> important takeaway of tonight is that we need to regroup with the state and regroup with the process. <laughs> Well, yeah, the most important thing is that we're not setting the wrong press. No, we're not setting the wrong expectation for our residents. Right. That's, that's, that's the most part important of what I'm thing. getting at is that there's a lot of people who right. were told early on that they should expect, you know, a buyout. And those people are not in the 100 year flood plan. So, and, you know, that's what I'm building with Cambridge and what learned that the, 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 the flood plan is going to be. So between them, with a with a proven process, proven as the resources and the connection with the state level, and then as a state official who just sent us an MOA and a memorandum of agreement that we, it's, that lays out our town's responsibility, um, and the state picks up everything outside of that. Putting those three things together before the end of the week with an action plan, for we need to get stuff to residents ASAP. Right. So just to clarify, it says the properties inside the FEMA special flood hazard area, they can continue to prep because they have money from both FEMA and the state program. Anything outside of that special FEMA special flood hazard area is not currently flood, uh, funded. But anyway, yeah, Thank there's you. some, that's the update. I mean, there'll be more to come. Okay, um, updated financials. Do you have anything? Okay. Your report's the best one so far, Rosemary. <laughs> um, I mean, it's- We're doing morning and budget today. Yeah, we have a couple extra, you're right. Um, municipal bill- <laughs> Municipal building and library repair, mitigation bid review, and possible award. So I received <laughs> two bids for 4 p.m. today. Um, one is uh, from Dale Tatro Incorporated, uh, and the other one is from Valley Restoration. Um, well, with these, um, there's what we need to do is uh, after we do them, then also, um, this night we could also let the labor haze if we got a collective bid on the possible, and then two, we have to start negotiating some contracts for this job. And I think. It would be really great if we could build a uh, select board member and take the pieces of what we need and what the funding we need to create. But it's just when we get into the new board, we have contracts with this. Um, and then we've got 
tell you what is your proper factory mess around Texas. I think that's um, get that segregation to nice and popular as well. So, we will. Um, so I think the main differences are uh, Delta Ajo construction is less uh, by about $17,000 and um, you included a bond value um, and a bond certificate, a good bond, which is a requirement of our contract. Um, that was the draft contract is included in the RFP, whereas Valley Restoration um, did, did not. Um, and so not only was it $17,000 more, it didn't include that bond piece. And I think that that's, um, we might not be able to accept this contract. That makes it a lot of responsibility. They only had two people that were involved in the mandatory site visit. visit. They both put in bids. And so now, um, and only one responded in, uh, in accordance with our. Chris Bailey at the, at the required bid day? Correct. He was. Yeah. Yeah. But he, but he didn't submit the bond. He didn't meet the bond. Correct. Yeah. So we have one. We have one eligible bid. Um, with that eligible bid, I ran some numbers. Um, the municipal building is going to have a total cost of $41,325 to the town, and that's after FEMA reimbursement. Um, that could go down. We're waiting on a total. Can you total, say that again? Uh, 41000 to the town, which is going to cost us after uh, reimbursement from FEMA. Um, that 41000 represents uh, a 12 and a half percent which is where we're at now. We're still waiting for this. Once this total damage within the state hits, I think it's two or three million, they'll, that'll bump us up to 92.5%, um, and then we'll only have to pay 7.5%. But right now, we're still at the 12.5% match. Um, so that of that, about 30,000 is what we, what we have to pay for that 12.5%. And then there's $11,000 that would not be covered by FEMA just because the cost of the work exceeds what FEMA would pay. Um, the the fifty percent above. Correct. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. It's just eleven thousand dollars. The exterior work is eleven thousand dollars more than the interior work, and so that wouldn't be covered. Um, is that is that the combination of both library and municipal? That's just the municipal building. Uh, just the library is thirty thousand two hundred fifty six dollars to the town, with a total project cost to like put these buildings back together, and. Um, and add resiliency. And a lot of these resiliencies are things that we might have done anyways, which is root. So there's a lot of benefit to this and that we can now withstand future floods, but it's $71,581 total cost to the town. Um, and, and we remember we asked everybody to do a 5% reduction and that 5% reduction was based on $120,000 cost to the town. And so we're, we're but this is less than what we anticipated um, at that time. In all fairness, that was totalized, right? Yeah. Uh, so have we received reimbursement for the almost 70 grand in trash probably yet? Oh, no, but that's so 70 add, grand, you're only going to have 7,000. Ideally, yeah. right? Yeah. And then there's 30 some odd thousand that we have in road damage, so we're already 100,000 out of pocket right now. Yeah. Ideally, that will only add up to another 10, 12, so, yeah. Um, so what's the total at the seven and a half percent? I don't do that. I just think we're just Does the ERAF change any insurance rate? Yes. So that um, FEMA, the insurance rate reimbursement only reduces the amount FEMA pays. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't reduce our match, right? Um, and so uh, we, we've been like very careful, fine tooth comb to make sure we're going to get through CRC, you know, the cost recovery, um, the FEMA audit. And, and I think so far everything is lined up really well. We've met and checked every box. If you go, if you move forward, um, with DKTRO, it checks the box for the low bid, um, in that we're doing, you know, it just, <laughs> We can either go back out for, for bid um, when we had nobody else coming, uh, or we can um, accept this. Those are our options. We would have to start the process over with a mandatory meeting. Does somebody want to 
<clears throat> Take us off. Yeah, go ahead. I think there's a couple pieces that we need to think about. One is it's one thing to get a bid. It's another thing to have FEMA say that it's a it's a good bid. Correct. They will accept those prices. I think that price. You know, and if you do make a motion to accept, I think it should be contingent on FEMA's approval. And it should also be contingent because have, have you gotten um, division of historic preservation? This That's the other piece too. Right? Is uh, we have not we have not heard. Um, I was just talking with the library about it's time to probably start pushing some buttons. It's been so long, um, and just we need we need the state to act on it. Um, I, it's unclear whether the state has not acted or it's unclear whether or not our FEMA rep has not reached out. So. Um, Who is this? What is the Shippo, entity? Uh, state resort? Oh. Mm, because because the library is of a certain age, yeah, it requires a national historic preservation analysis, yeah, yeah. Um, and that is being done through the state division of historic preservation. Yes, and there's a state preservation officer, Shippo, and he. We don't know if he's received. FEMA puts it out to him. We don't reach out to him. And so we had a meeting a month ago with our FEMA rep, Brad Vegas. Um, I I pushed hard. I mean, I think you guys were there, weren't you? When I was like, what's his email address? Let's all get in the sandbox and play. And like our FEMA rep like would not give up his information. Like we could like, there's no way the town could move that forward. And so we went, we're just waiting on our FEMA rep to like, we don't know, did our FEMA rep reach out to him and we're waiting on the state or did, are we waiting on our FEMA rep to do his job? We don't know. It's quite frustrating. Uh, it's very frustrating. And more so as our FEMA rep is being relocated, they have a six month term where they keep, where they bounce around the country. So like, we're going to have a new rep and new. So like, that's why we have to push buttons. Like now, you know, we need to, we need to get an answer. So we need to talk to her. Well, <clears throat> I think you can talk to any, if you know, if you have a contact, I think now's the time to do it. And he's and our local reps as well. Um, we, we need help. And this is, it's outside. We've done all we can on the town side, and it's time that we start reaching out. I, I wish I had an email address for him because I could just say, "Hey, what's the status?" But uh, we can't be the only town. That's why I'm. I can. I'll check in tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's not. It's not the Well, has a different rep than we do. You know, it's like it's not always. That cut dry. I suspect the volume is maybe one or two state and state preservation officers who can do the kind of work. Um, and they're probably encouraged that. I don't, I don't know that for fact. Yeah. So I'm guessing, knowing the size of the division of post historic preservation, there probably aren't too many people available yeah. to do the work. Now, having said that, could they job that up to somebody or? I mean, I think it's just time to get it. If we had a response to say, yeah, you're on the list, sorry, that would that's, that'd be understandable. But having just being dead in the water and having no, no conversation is frustrating. Can we find out if there's any, if, if we were to accept the bids and move forward contingent on a number of different things, including a historic preservation review, could we move forward? The municipal building doesn't need that. Could we move forward with the municipal building piece? I, I think uh, I think so. I think what we'll do, if you make your motion as such, we can do that. We put it together to try to bring in larger contractors who would make it more affordable for us because it's such a complicated job with the mitigation piece. You know, the more money you get, the more interest you get. And so we still only had local people anyways at $500,000, you know, so we try. The bonding piece is a tough one. You know, most of your smaller, I know, smaller, even mid-sized companies. Like and I did direct contact too to snow builders, and they didn't have any interest. You know, we it was pretty much just direct contact. I could prop it back in. Um, it's feeling is peaceful that we only got one bid. Yeah, June is re relaxing. Uh, well, we got two bids only for one, which is. Yeah, that's right. You know, non-responsive, I think, is still taking okay. numbers. Um, yeah. Which is good. So, well, I guess 
if you guys would make the motion to accept it and just to make, decide on what contingent fees you want. And then at least then I have marching grounds to move forward and try to get some action done in the next two weeks. But I'm getting I mean, if I could get this to the attorney, like by the end of the week, and we have a contract put together. I mean, then, then we're four to six weeks out. He's, there's a crew of guys, and they they're ready to go. I mean, they're waiting on us. So, so you need a motion um, to approve DTHO contingent on FEMA and the State Department of Historical Preservation. Yeah, and you know, permanent approval of the contract, probably or something. You know, whatever. I mean, I don't know. So moved. Hey, we have a motion. To I was gonna ask Donna, could you make that one clear? <laughs> uh, so I, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the bid from BTHO Construction LLC uh, for for the public li library and the municipal building. Um, and so for the library, for two hundred forty-two thousand fifty dollars, and for the municipal offices. $242,600 um, contingent on the approval of our FEMA representative, the State Department of Historical Preservation, and our attorney. Do you have a second? Yes. Okay, discussion. To pass the earlier point, okay. I don't want to be a rope across the road, um, but I'm. You you had a very good question. What is our ultimate liability going to be um, after you factor in that? If we get to the ninety two point five percent, which I think we will, it, it would in my mind it would really be nice to know what our ultimate costs above that fifty percent are going to be. So we know. Uh, what do you mean about that fifty percent? So this, instead of using the twelve point five percent, what is the seven point five percent? I mean, I mean, planned on twelve point five. That was like my head. Is, you know, like you, you got, you know, how you guys were like, don't take, don't put the grants in the budget until you have the grants. So that's why I was like, oh, I'm not going to put the increment mm -hmm. in until the yeah. maximum liability. Yeah. If everything well, is okay, it would be like seventy two ish thousand. Between the two. Yeah, between yeah. the two. At, at, at the 7.5%. At the 12.5%. 12. 12. 12. 12. So it's $36,348 and 78 cents. So of, I guess the part that I'm trying to store to get at is plus. how close were we to that program? You have your base cost for replacement. Yeah, I have those numbers for yeah. And then you've got the so-called mitigation piece out, and that's basically 50% of... Yeah, so, so the way this bid is written, if you look at it, there's 3A, 1, 2, 3, and that for the municipal offices. <laughs> this is setting some designs so to replace the three split condition, 3A1, 3A2, 3A3, plus mobilization and bonding. Those were part of an addendum. So you take all those numbers, you add it up, that's your cost to pre flood costs. That sets a number, you know, for the municipal building. It's uh, one hundred eighteen thousand five hundred eighty dollars. That means we get one hundred eighteen thousand five hundred eighty dollars for mitigation. And then when you add, when you put those, then when you take the the, the four ABC, that's your exterior cost. And so that's so this was this bid was set up so they put together the numbers once, but then I can take it to FEMA and say, hey, look, here's your pre cost one bid. We have a pre cost price and a total cost price at the end, all wrapped up into one set of numbers. And so when you take the municipal, it's actually the 118.580 is missing five, 7,000 from bonding, but you take that municipal cost and you, um, the mitigation is 136,720. When you subtract the cost replaced to pre-flood, it comes up to about $11,000.
Um, Those numbers don't don't jive at all with the, you sent out a, you sent out an email to us with pbed of one fifteen eight resiliency of one twenty six eight total of two forty two six. That's right there. Municipal yeah. building. So what he's doing, uh, this plus this plus this plus this plus this is pre flood. And does that add up to one fifteen eight? Uh, I can do it really quick if you want. Uh, so just being simplistic of mind, I'm thinking that the delta between what is covered under mitigation and what was pre-flood is the difference between 126.8 and 115.8? Correct. Okay. That's, that's yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's 115.8. Okay. That was right. 12.5% of the total project is 242.6. You know, you figure out 12.5% and then you add 11,000 into it. That's why I came up with that 41,000. Right. Cross. So on the library, you actually have, we have money, left, money right? left over, and and we can't spread that between the no, two proposals. Two, no, the two TIs are called. Okay. The two TIs. There is some room that might be done, and then they're going to cut out the floor in the library, the concrete floor, and pour in a different slab, I believe, and that this might allow for greater thickness, which then prevents the risk of hydrostatic uplift. And if there's cracks in the floor now and it, it's a sound of hydrostatic uplift. So there's- So what we're getting out of with the municipal building, we're getting a flood barrier around the entire circumference of the building, flood gates and all the doors. Right. So in essence, that should mean- And elevated- You can. DX units outside. Right. Right. Above, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're getting basically all of that for eleven thousand bucks, about about our money. Well, twelve and a half percent plus eleven thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm looking at just the difference, just the resiliency versus I mean, pre flood conditions. If, if we wanted to, like, it would be. I think it's a good deal. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. would say twenty six thousand, right? The fifteen thousand for twelve and a half percent above replacement. And then eleven thousand. So twenty six thousand. You're getting like a, a waterproof building. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, I'm I'm supportive. I just I just wanted everyone to understand the mechanics of what what it was actually going to cost. I think it's great. I think we should do it. <clears throat> okay. Should we vote? Maybe. Are we ready? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I'll just say aye. I've been aye. Thanks, Edmund. For unanimous. Yeah, thanks for being difficult and not sharing your thoughts. <laughs> I shared my thoughts. No need to roll. <clears throat> but let's continue. So you got what you need? Do so. Um, the last piece is can the board delegate one or two members to um, act on behalf of the board? You know, not sign anything, but just do the organizational work of building that contract with the <laughs> the DJ Trowing and the town attorney, just so that way when it comes back to the board, it's a lot smoother. The best example of that, I think, was Duncan when he did the interlocal agreement. Like when he came back, a lot of the questions were already answered. So could we have like some delegation so then we can come back with a contract to get it signed and out the door, just kind of speed it up. Are you asking for Duncan? I, I'm asking for two people. <laughs> I don't care who they are. The attorney is going to be the majority of the lift. I, I would do two because then if somebody can't make it, there's a backup. That's the only reason why, right? And, and honestly, it's probably going to be the, the attorney's going to come back with 10 questions. One person is going to answer them. The attorney's going to come back with, a, you know, it's, it's going to be pretty quick. I imagine. And we still got wrong for, for this piece. Yeah. Which we paid him. Yeah. Couple thousand dollars. It's all reimbursable. Which is reimbursable. And so is this ah. 12 and a half percent. Yeah. So uh, it's getting higher. Anyways. Duncan, are you willing? 
I worked I worked with Ron and Tom to develop the initial RFP, so I'm 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 okay doing it, and I'm probably the only retired one on the board. So <laughs> other than Mark, Mark's not retired. Right. Plus, he's been retired <laughs> since he's my age. I think uh, I don't get the blue light. Then do we need a motion to? I can answer emails, but I'm not going to be able to show up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> no, we don't need a motion. We can just agree. And Duncan, if you're willing. Thank you. Yeah, I'll do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, budget and warning. So, uh, full review and approval of the budget. I think we need to discuss year end surplus. Um, being that Gene and Kelly are here, might be an opportune. Maybe it would be a Stacy question. Um, but the salaries for the increase on the library side are not the same as against of the town employee side. I think they'll, that was just a mathematical thing. Yes. Stacy gave me a number of a 7.4% increase. And then, uh, that was back before the board made So then I just, all I did was make it match. <laughs> so, like when I look at the spreadsheet right here, I see the 6.4% change. Right. So there's a 6.4% change for salaries of the library, right? I get it. And there's a 34 at the town of Highway, but the 34 it's really oh, six point four for six months and the two point five for the following ah, six months. Point point taken. Yeah, that was something I did. It wouldn't have the way the spreadsheet was shot up set up since it was created, it never factored in the second six months. Right. That was something I did, and I only did it to the town and highway. I did not do that to the library. That was an oversight of me. Yeah. That was like a new new creation to the library. Generalization. Since I've been on the board, the library board of trustees has followed what the town does for everybody else. Is that correct? And you guys are okay if we budget the same way that we're budgeting for everybody else? I'm not trying to chop numbers here. I'm just saying. So, what I mean is the 6.4% increase in salaries for uh, the first six months. Six months we were talking about 6.4%. But then next January, it's based on the previous year's. November, New England costs consumer price index. And we know that because we just went through. And so it's 2.5% increase. So next year, so it's 6.4 now for the first six months, and then 2.5 for the remaining six months of fiscal year 25. So you're still getting a raise. But when you budget it, that averages out to a 3.4% increase over the course of the whole fiscal year. I don't really deal with the salary because that's a trustee position. I'm not trying to put you on the spot either. Yeah. It's just a difference. Rosemary might know better. I think we yeah. just go along with the time. Yeah. That right? yeah. You have been doing the past. So will there be a, not much angst if we budget accordingly? I mean, it sounds like Tom just needs to update Stacy. I think that's right. Okay. Yeah. Your 6.4 blended is going to be, I mean, if you did one at 6.4 and one at, or one at three, yeah, it's going to be like not, it's going to be basically the same amount of money. I mean, I think when we talked to Stacy last year, she was plugging in a number, the sake of plugging in a number. I understand it's not going to grotesquely change our budget, but if we're approving a budget tonight, yeah, should it not be as accurate as it can be? I agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. So could we ask you know, Tom to upgrade the salary spreadsheet so that it shows those differential rates? 
Uh, yeah. But I need to update the estimated salary sheet. Yeah, the estimated salary sheet. And I don't even know off the top of my head, does that, does the library sheet, uh, does the library, the cell in that estimated sheet transfer over the main salary sheet? You know, it's manual. That's, what, that's why I missed it. Because everybody else I has found the library comes off their budget night and manually input it. I mean, I did. I, it makes one tenth of a percent difference. One tenth of a percent, and what we're raising for taxes, Mr. Cook, is that ten times? Whole percent. So, uh, well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be hugely difficult for you to go ahead and do that with a tough. No, no, I, I'll sit down. I would like to do it tomorrow because I'm gonna. They're not really part of that spreadsheet, so I'm gonna have to like plug them in in the same format as everybody else, the two employees. Um, I don't really want to rush that result. It could be, if it could be approved tonight based on that change. Pending changes. Yeah, and then I could have Rosemary review, you know, just to make sure I really write But don't we have to update the morning and some? I think you can update the, you can approve no, the, the numbers aren't even plugged in there. Oh. We'll probably end up approving the morning as amended or whatever, and then having to explain it later. Yeah, later. Just like to side out. We can put it on the same way that we can approve the warning. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. I, that is a terrible practice. Um, that is a really good way to have signed document that you didn't actually sign because it doesn't line up. You trust your, your employees. No, I don't trust contracts with well, there's no reason why we can't individually go in and sign the warning once. Yeah, that's fine. I, I would really like to have somebody go through the budget again with a fund to film, so that's our amazing. approval would be based on. <laughs> yeah. So I asked Sue to do it for me, and she's straight through the roof this week. But I I, I agree. Somebody who's not me should to go through it again. Yeah, it's it's just a really good idea to have I mean because after a while you you can't see your own mistakes because you've looked at it too many times. Well that's exactly right. I yeah. mean that's how I found these other two things, you know. It's yeah. like it's just gonna keep coming up. Yeah. So exactly. Uh, do we know what our contracted amount for fuel and propane are? No. Uh not without looking at the contract. It's um I can't remember off the top of my head either. That's that whole situation is probably going to change here soon. We're going to that contract for <laughs> number of gallons that doesn't equal our annual usage because we didn't have all the buildings on our contract. So, that, so there was, I mean, it was just there was just too much transition between two. You know, it started with the way it was, then we started a new thing with Carl and I took it over not having any experience or knowing what I was looking at. No, it's perfectly fine. You know, we, we really just need to do away with that, you know. I was just wondering for those three line items, because there is like notes, but if that historical usage isn't accurate, it's hard to go by the notes. The only person who has the usage is the one person who probably doesn't want to talk to any of us right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the former contractor. I, I, I don't believe. I, I mean, believe he certainly enjoyed really talking to me one afternoon, but I, I don't. I do believe we looked at. You can't repeat what he said. I don't know. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so, for lack of a better guesstimate, thank you. I think. They're high. I'd rather budget a little more than a little less. Yeah, but for the municipal building in the Holcomb House, we're thinking about a 44% increase, 32% increase. I don't think we'll see that realistically. The highway garage we kept at par.
so if that's going to stay up higher is the municipal building the Holcomb house going to stay up higher as well I could lower it another two tenths of a percent <laughs> do you have a suggestion Evan lower each of them by a thousand dollars for uh municipal office instead of budgeting 6500 budget 5500 i believe that's what heat is for a line item uh, and holcomb house propane and heat sure i mean the usage there was supposed to drop by 30%. Yeah, it's, we were promised that, but it's a different discussion. The projection was. Projection. The projection was grotesquely off. Um, I think that's a safe number. Nobody's telling me it's not. Yeah, I was wondering where that shows up. You mean are you talking about the mill house? Yeah. I went all over the top. It's got fifty dash six. Your control. No 50 to S2 on this yeah, part of resolution. Fifty dash seven dash twenty dash thirty three. So it's just seven. Oh, so I don't care. Just you know what line I am in this? What line? Oh, uh, two thirty nine. Yeah, two twenty nine. So that's what the heat. Oh, heat. <laughs> I thought that was a municipal <laughs> building. It's municipal building, no house. The lower storage. It's in the garage. What's on the hallway? Oh. <laughs> it's secret. So you said that was municipal building, no house, and what else? Oh, just those two. Yeah. What are your proposal was drop both? Both one two twenty nine and two thirty to fifty five hundred. Just to fifty five from sixty five, which is more than we were at last year. And to date, it doesn't look like we're going to grotesquely overshoot. I'm good with that. Fine, fine. Yep. Mark. Yeah, yeah. It's important. Yeah. I think it Mark's good. All right. What do we want to talk about for a year end surplus? We're now at 1.5% increase to the tax burden. We're going to suggest you that we, you've got 130000 in there now for applied to reduce taxes. Yes. Um, or, <laughs> I'm going to suggest 120. Instead of 130, you you wanted to go to 110 at one point, right? I did. Still could be convinced too. But then part of the reason I'm saying that is if you look at the if you look at the spreadsheet column, you end up with a negative dollars. It's not on this sheet. I think it's not on this on this budget. Um, $816. Yeah, eight fifteen. You end up with a minus. So if we if we so like want money there, it ends line? up being a positive amount. That was good. Yeah. So like the proposed preservation or that. Yeah, the idea is another tenant like equipment reserve. Well, that has us. That has twenty. That, that's putting twenty. Twenty. I know. I like that idea. Uh, uh, the one thing that Evan talked to me about is, and I, I put a note, we have neglected the um, tax anticipation reserve fund for several years now. And 
the delta between what could go in it and what is in it is basically 25,000. Mm -hmm. We we could the, the and tax tax anticipation reserve fund by definition can have a maximum of ten percent of the budget in any given year. So right now there's three ten seven eighty in the fund, um, and we the budget is uh, three thirty five eight ninety four. So the delta between those two is twenty four. 25,114. And even if we had that maxed out, it still doesn't cover our first quarter bills. But people usually pay some of their taxes early enough to work. Right. Out. Yeah, that's always, that's always. No, I, that's the, I was just trying to get at the gist of. Our first why, quarter bills are. Why? Like, so, yeah. Because we can't technically collect taxes. No, but our first quarter bills are. Four hundred fifteen thousand. Setting that reserve fund basically means that we never have to go borrow. <laughs> I understand. This yeah. I was just wondering. Speaking of the tax anticipation reserve fund, did you get clarity? Because I believe that was going to be an article when we discussed if there was clarity, if that could be used. Remind me. Right. Where, uh, I'm slipping in 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 lieu of in lieu of um, having to go out and borrow for that money. If we could use that to cover uh, anticipated cash, that's what we need. need. We actually held it in the general fund, like just fund accounted it out. And so that way, you as you spent down in general, technically borrowing from yourself without reducing this, so it's taxes. Yeah. The question is though, is is the wording of that article? Be flexible right. enough to allow it to happen. Yeah, I mean, that, you said that, and I, I was supposed to look that up and get it. Because that would be a, an article in the warning to change it to modify it. How are we going to account for on the FEMA money if that ever comes? Like the trash stuff. So. I was going to keep track of that in a separate fund. In a separate fund. It's so not going through our regular budget. And it's in a different. Like there's a different GL code, we can see it separately too. When you change that, from you know, I'm trying to understand how this mechanism works, but when you change that 130 to 120, where does that show in the budget, or just, that doesn't? This is just those. So that's we're saying that that's the amount to reduce taxes in fiscal year 25. If you go way back up yeah. to the total revenue lines, line 125. Right, they're not linked, but you need to like manually enter right. the one, 120 in there. Yeah, so you need to change on line 125. So I'm, I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to paste special that thing, right? That's really what we need. So we don't have they could stuff. be linked together. Yeah. I mean, I would entertain, I would still entertain the idea of 110,000. In that, in that awareness, a 2.4% 2. 2. increase to tax burden, which is less than inflation. I, we are tied to that number. I, I, We're not tied to anything else if there's cash flow issues. 4% increase to tax rate. If we do 110. Did you change the two heating lines to 5,500? And reduce the library line by about two thousand dollars. Which library and line is this? Sorry, salaries. Just tell me once more that your piece four is not hitting in front of ten instead of twenty. Wait a minute, please. Well, up to twenty. Yeah, uh, twenty five. It's already at twenty. Well, if we if we, if we did one ten instead of one twenty, there'd be another ten thousand available for. <laughs> Possibly putting it into the reserve fund. Um, that's my thing. That reserve fund makes me nervous. Uh, there are several that make me nervous. <laughs> um, and that should one, make you nervous because I'm going to be long gone by the time. One page thing in the wall. I just took the previous line, multiplied it times 103% <laughs> previous year. 
Could you make it 3.4? Oh, that's what I did. 3.4. Sorry. Uh, what did I get exactly? And this is where it'll be a contingent. Um, I did 60, $76,495.30. More 95, 30. <laughs> Can we go right into plus numbers? So if you have 76, 495, 40, can we just make it 77,000? Imagine. Definitely a topic for discussion. You can just build that into your formula. Yeah, it can round you can up. round up. Yeah. What is that? So there's an equation. It's a round up. It's a round up. You You can do that with a whole. Or you column. can just format it to round up. But but it doesn't the thing is if you format it to round up, then the next time you the cell is still that actual value. So when you do calculations, it doesn't look right. So you should use round up in your formula. Are you at 2.4 now? 3.4%. So You're at 3.4. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, like learn about round. 365 down at the bottom. The amount to be raised by taxes. Right. Right. Top. Uh, so you guys are doing. I'm going to be raised by taxes. Yeah. It, yeah. Hang on. I was at 2.4. When I reduce the amount of year end surplus to, to reduce taxes to 110, the board hasn't agreed to that. I just said that's what it would look like. I'm still at 120. Yeah, if you change it to 110, you'll see 2.4. Now, if we reduce to that to 110, it would be putting all of it into the fund or some into the, the TARF. Tax anticipation. That's all up for discussion. Call it a tarp. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Yeah. The oh, tarp. Man. I feel like it's something cats are. It's the new thing. So, well, to um, reduce that 130 to 110, we freed up $20,000, which, because we were at negative 800 with our reservations previously, it really only frees up like 9,000, 19,200. Okay, so my question remains: Would we would we be splitting it half and half between the two places, or what would? What's your what's your pleasure? Board decision. Yeah. I would propose ten thousand, twelve thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars into the tax anticipation reserve fund. Just say it. I kind of wanted to, and the remainder into the grant match. Reserve fund. I like those two also. I actually thought I was going to argue with you about the way you wanted to split this money. Well, I split it in we multiple different ways. Tonight? Is it important that we make? I we, mean, need, we need to approve the budget so it can be on the budget, morning. Do we have to designate where we're putting? Is this this becomes yeah. part of the budget that the voters. I mean, it needs to go in. It needs to go into the town okay. report. Okay. So, no, I'm 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 peaceful with one ten. When you go down to the proposed reservations, all those cells, are they represented somewhere in the budget? No. No. That 110 is the only one. Right, Rosemary? Because those are all big. Huh? The amount to reduce tax is the only one that's shown because we'll have to make a motion after the close of this year to actually move it. It's always confused me because the actual cash on hand is not accurate either. But it is accurate as of July 1. And there are a couple, there are a couple of reservation numbers that need to be modified in the sheet that you've got. Grand matching is there one? Yeah, the yeah, the funds that are actually in the you know last year we did it on percentages, not numbers. Yeah. Yeah, this is partly on percentage. The way it's set up right now, it's partly on percentage. It's, you know, a couple of them are percentages, um, like the buildings and grounds. The the three lines from 489 to 491 are percentages. 380 what? Uh, 489 to 491. The, there are three that are twenty thousand a piece. Um, it's it's a percentage, but it may not be the percentage we want. I mean, I have manual entry, but they're close to a. They're 
when I put it together, I did a formula. But okay. Um, well, um, sometimes when I download it, it breaks some of them. Yeah, it might. says it breaks mm -hmm. the links. It but we can put whatever it. as long as it comes as long as it mm -hmm. leaves. Right, it you know matter. the amount that we've got available on hand. I mm -hmm. think the goal is to is to say that we're committing eight hundred and three thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars and seventeen cents. <clears throat> We could round up on the 17 cents, around down on the 17 cents, but maybe so. <laughs> but as long as, as long as the commitments equal that sum of money, it doesn't really matter what, goes. you know, whether you do it as a percentage or, yeah. you know, unlike, like you said, June 30th or August 30th or September or whatever. Um, Rosemary's going to come back and tell us what we actually have available. So these proposed numbers are going to change, or they could change based on what the actual is. Am I wrong, or did we have exactly left over what we were predicting last year? How did that work? And we had 155000 more than the, what we proposed. So what do we need to do best to move this baby? <laughs> You all have to just agree. That's all. There's your percentages, but oh, so is this um that's not even sixty five thousand. That. That's what we are putting into you the do your percentage based on that reserve fund this year. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I think a big conversation is if the entire board is copacetic with one hundred ten thousand of those taxes. Can you guys say what you are? <laughs> Do you guys tell the voters the increase is based on the? Do you do a percentage increase on for the tax rate, or do you do a percent? What do you like? How do you present the number to the voters? Do you say we are presenting an increase to the municipal tax rate of X percent? Yes, we're currently saying the increase on the tax rate. Correct. All right. Great. Because every loan fund, I mean the capital equipment loan fund and grants. Yeah. And stuff through the budget yep. that can radically change the actual and so budget if, amount. If we go to the bottom, we're only changing the tax rate one point eight three one percent. What? That's the total budget. Yeah, that's, that's the, the overall budget. The total budget. Right. But we're also bringing in less in revenue, so the overall budget's increasing by a smaller amount than the tax rate is increasing. So we have 2.4% up on top current taxes, right? If, if it's at 110,000? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so that's that's just dollars to dollars, like how much, right? Like how much we're going to bring in. But if we go to the bottom, is the tax rate difference? No, that's the budget. That's the difference, difference between last year's budget and this year's budget. So I'm looking at estimated fiscal year 24 tax rate proposed. Wait a minute. Zero Which point line are you on? 528. No, you're, you're, oh, you're, you're, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so 5. No, no, no you, need, you need a computer. You want yeah, to come over here? Manual. What's that? 528 is a manual entry, which you'll have to get from Rosemary for this current year tax rate. 528 is not a manual entry. Yeah, what do you have? Oh, 529. I've got the budget divided by the rate less. You have what he set the, out, or this is this is my own. Because your previous sure. one was the budget divided by the grand list, but that's now on five twenty five, not five twenty eight. So we have the the actual tax rate is grand list. So where did I lose three rows? I don't know. If we're working, yeah, okay. What were you saying, Tom? Um, so the change in the tax rate based on the bottom is only 1.83%. Those are not correctly entered. Where are you getting 1.83%? It's it's part of what you don't have, Duncan. All right, we'll send you go over the T report. Yeah. You know, town report tax rate. Right. What does that say for you? I don't know where he is. Uh, he's, on a, the, he's on the other tab. The tab on the bottom that's red. T report tag. Yeah, none of that's filled in. Well, this is, this is all filled in for me. 
I'm literally working off the one that you sent out. <clears throat> Sorry, earlier. That's all right. Um, I could, oh, this is where my links are broken. I don't have that file. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. No, I have the file name today's date. Oh. So that's where my, my link's broke when I downloaded it. So sorry. You want to look at mine? Sure. I mean, all of those are still in the bottom around your 530s on the proposed budget. But I don't want to download it. It breaks some of the links. So we have this here, which shows the change in tax rate, the actual, which comes in and factors it in municipal adjustment versus the proposed is a 1.831. That's your actual, what, what's this percentage based off from? It's uh, actual, well, uh, this minus this. It's just a bit where it comes from. It's still fine. Okay, so that is. It's that's where I went. That was broken. That's what I had too. Same numbers. And are you getting all this down? Because I'm not. Oh, yeah. No, I think of the people. Uh, so, I don't you know. Know. 3 on 110 versus 130. 20. Sorry, repeat that down. Um, yes, I can. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, but. I propose 110 salaries to reduce taxes instead of 130 or <laughs> give that. In the draft, we're looking at. Then, do we have? Do we have a consensus on what the tax increase would be at one time? No. No, they don't. They've got. They should be It sounded like it was somewhere between what one one point eight and two point four. Yeah, and that was. It's kind of a large discrepancy, but it's still it's still both are under the rate of inflation. So yeah. Yeah, that. In and we are peaceful with how um, there's an answer case down tax 20,000 between. Yeah, I like the new allocation personally. I like that new allocation. I like dividing it between the two the grant and the um, TARF. Tarf. Love it. Uh, and and Evan's proposal was 15 for the tax anticipation of the balance. So. I had quite a few proposals. Uh, no, it was a split between it was the 10 and 10, right? Oh, the equal split. Equal split. So <laughs> if we take last year's tax rate, so do we agree that you take the total number to be raised by taxes and divide it by the grant left, you get the tax rate? Yes. Yeah. So that's 0.9045. And if we go on, where, where are you looking at that? At the bottom. That's 525, 528 for you. Yeah. Um, Oops, it's 525 for me also. And then if we go. Um, but is that percentage correct? Can I go look, can I look at the actual tax? Where is this? Yeah. Oh, well, hold on. Check what were you saying, Tom? So then we look at the actual tax bill that went out. So the actual tax rate is 0 0.8821. Mm -hmm. So I put that in there. Yeah. And now we have a 2.535 percent increase. I don't. Where's 2.535 coming from? Well, we take the calculated from the amount we suggest to raise the taxes divided by the grand list value. You get 0.9045. Yeah. And then you put in FY24 actual tax rate and you manually enter 0.8821. Right. And then the difference is 0 0.0224. You're, you're smarter than me on this one. The FY24 actual tax rate was 0 0.882. Yeah. yeah, he has that manually entered in there. 0 0.8821. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are we saying the same thing by saying that the difference is it's sixteen dollars and twenty six cents per hundred thousand dollars in grand list value? Uh, but I'm not. Guess, I don't know where you're getting the point two two four. I don't really like that. There's not formulas everywhere. Honestly, this is the, this is the calculated. This is the actual. 
So I believe this says oh. five to five minus okay. five so to nine. That was one point eight before, but now it's two point five, right? Yeah, because yeah. I because I changed it. There must have been a there was somebody had a different number. Yeah, that. that's what I thought. I well, was just a little confused. The two point five makes sense because it's really close to lining up to above. Correct. Yeah. So we're at two point five percent. And if you split those equally, I think aren't we still going to be at eight a, month, a negative eight fifteen on the on the reserve for other purposes then? Only if we did ten and ten. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm saying is we need to. We did like nine thousand. Yeah. Nine hundred dollars. See what I'm getting at, Tom? Sure. If we, if we take, if we well, actually, from your spreadsheet, you were at 130 to reduce taxes. If we go to 110, that's actually 20. I think I already put in. But when you back out that 800, it's 19,183 dollars, 17 cents. If you divided that by two and split them equally, maybe Beth would be agreeable. I don't think Mark cares. Cares. Just the 10 for one and nine, one eight three for the other. Yeah. Yeah, 10 to. We're so we don't end up with a negative number on the bottom line. The 491. Yeah. So basically, that would be split so that the TARF would get 10000 and the grant match would get the balance. If we do it that way, I, I'm fine. I, I don't care. So that's 539016 plus 9183 uh, Yeah, I guess yes. that's what you proposed, huh? And the industrial park expenses of seventy five thousand. Those are the ones that um, Victoria Helwig was talking about. The other line that yeah. might it might be as high as a hundred thousand. Right, but then when we said we had property that could potentially help with ag mitigation, she said seventy five thousand. Yeah, reasonable. Yeah. So you know that's what we get in there now. If, if we're adding money to the grant matching. Fun and it ends up we need more. It could always come out of there because it, it would be. That's a scam, by money. the way. What a scam? What? The ag mitigation. That's a it's your state, federal, and state scam. Oh, um, don't do it. Is. It's almost like your head went the same place mine did, don't get <laughs> What? Yeah, that's scary. A little bit. <laughs> A lot scary, actually. I don't know what your thoughts were, but I don't want to know. <laughs> the okay. only other thing I wanted to ask you about, Tom, and I don't know if you put it in or not. Um, in in my email, I you had somebody had talked about putting two point five percent in for your position and the CEDC I position. I don't think we should touch it because that's making a decision for a future board. Uh, well, it is, but if we don't budget for it. Um, I tend to disagree with you. I would like to budget for it myself. Yeah, um, I'm I'm perfectly happy. Oh, that doesn't oh, care. Oh, Mark doesn't care. <laughs> Duncan yeah, and Shane and I can get on. I board. do care. I'm a taxpayer. Thank you very much. Now, when you say taxpayers, <laughs> it better be about me. <laughs> right, but you're still on the board. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> well, you know, my point is that uh, that I think the board should decide it. The, the issue is that the letter, the operative letter, operative employment letters defined a certain amount for the first six months and a certain amount for the second six months. I think you might have suggested that it was that we should consider at least the 2.5% that everybody else was getting. I'm happy doing that. We need a budget for it. But I just mm -hmm. think we, sh yeah, if we don't budget for it, we can make the final decision at the one year determination, but if we don't budget for it, it won't. Yeah, it won't be in the budget. And so if we assume it's a, it, let's just say it's four, four one start date. So that way it's just two four because my second six months, I guess, September. And then it would just six months of the, so we add two two point five percent we would be at, I guess 
it would be for the second six months. Okay. Of 25. Uh, yeah. You know, I guess it would be the second six months of 25 for the first um, six months. That one I can actually do right, right now, yeah. I think. I think if you just add it into the sec second six months as a 2.5% increase, it should it should cover it. You good with that? Yeah. Ask Mark. You good? I mean, there's nothing that there's nothing that says we can't raise it. Um, you know, we could we could. But at least this gets, you know, at least gets them the 2.5 that everybody else is getting. Good. <laughs> then the other thing, Tom, I wasn't seeing it in your budget. Did you add in a dollar amount for that um, payroll, child care payroll tax? No. I, we talked about it. I saw it, it somewhere. It, was it just in the email? We needed a line. I, I I had put it in my email that we should add it. So I think that should be added. And the question on that was, the, if I understand the legislation correctly, we could require the employees to pay half and the employer to pay half? I think it's one, it's of 0.44%, the max to the employee is 0.11%. Okay, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, I, I would advocate just having the employer pay the full amount. And not splitting it between the employer and the employee, but well, that's just me. It's like it's not a lot. I like the gratitude. <laughs> I mean, the whole what thing. is the total amount? Oh, good. Yeah. It's like you and me paying the school. <laughs> By the way, my daughter turned forty today. Congratulations! Congratulations! Forty. She's pretty much my age. Yeah, a little. <laughs> Your daughter and I are in of the same in California? No, the one in East Bunker. Yeah. It was Super Bowl Sunday and it was 22 degrees below zero that day. Holy cow. My daughter was born in 95 degree weather and their air conditioning broke in the <laughs> But that made you happy. <laughs> they turned off the fan, and I would told them they better turn it back on. Who was born in Minnesota? Minnesota. Yeah. And the only other thing I had noticed Tom, was, um, again, take a double check um, on the uh, <laughs> at the very bottom the the balances in the reserve funds. Yeah, on mine, I um, they don't line up the funds, but I I may, if you go to click on it's a manual entry to match for us there. I looked at it earlier, and you were off from her sheet by a little bit, not not a whole lot. Yeah, hey, let me uh, finish writing this down. And double check. Uh, Read them off. I'll watch. Okay, do you need bank reappraisal? Yep. 44, 5, 54, 46. Yep. Uh, buildings and grounds, 102, 175.78. Yep. Capital equipment, 241. Oh, wait. Sorry. I need to jump. Capital That's equipment. one of the ones you did say. Capital equipment. Highway equipment? Uh, yeah. It's highway equipment. Yeah. 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 Equipment. Okay, yeah. Um, 241, 900.83. Yep. Uh, bridge and culvert 97,265.08. Yep. Recreation reserve $17,059.63. Yep. Uh, skate park reserve. I think this is the one that's, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> skate park reserve should be $15,687.85. For FY, I think it was 11000 For FY23, yeah. Conservation fund. Yep. Records preservation 2.57710. Wait, records yeah. and preservation. Okay, yeah. Tax anticipation 310780.25. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Emergency fund 6448264. Yep. Which is empty now. Uh, historical facility 34711. 
Thirty four seven zero nine forty three. Yeah. Skate park one more time. Skate park reserve fifteen thousand six eighty seven point three five. And your total is nine. One ninety three oh five. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Which created a change balance. Yeah, I did for the purposes of the high level equipment reserve fund. I did add uh, no one of the 12,043 that we had. So that is going to show a balance of 253,943 carried over from last year. So if you look at the Capital reserve sheet. Oh, the number has that number has been updated to include the 12,043 that we just approved at our last board meeting as a carryover number. Wait a minute. So if you look at <laughs> this is sheet name. Are you at line twenty three column E? Oh, that's why it's red. That's why it's red. Yeah, the two fifty three nine forty three. Nine forty three That that is the balance of two forty one nine plus the twelve thousand forty three that we just approved. It's a good one to remember. Okay. That should be a formula. Can we make that a formula? Either that or a separate line item for every year um, if we move money from surplus into the reserve fund. Yeah, I like it being a formula because then you can follow it back. Like you it tells the story. <laughs> Duncan's saying formula. He's just saying like add a cell for year end surplus and addition or whatever. And then, just, now. then it just adds into the it adds into the total column. Yep. Is that another way to describe that and calculate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good note for all of you. Myself, right? Yep. True. True that. Do you have anything on the budget, Mark? Shane, also peaceful. Happy to be been quiet. Yeah, I've been talking. What are you talking about? I've talked when I needed to. You're welcome. Do we know how much that? I appreciate that. Thank you. Extra line is going to cost Tom. $3,192.73. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. What? Three nine. What? Three one nine three point seven three. Round that up. I it's, mean, that's not change or 2.5 to 2.55. No, it should be like, it should change it to 2. Point. It's very close to 2.6. It's very close to 2.6. Okay. It should be that's still pretty good. You know, that's still not bad. It's very good. I'm, I'm it's real good. happy with a 2.6% yeah. increase in the amount We're of at like, yeah. taxes. Well, Let's challenge the uh, school board to do the same. Yeah. Right. What's that change your bottom elementary to, Tom? I, I still can't figure out where that formula was wrong that you ended up with the 2.5 and change before you said you changed one formula down in the 530s. You know, I just did a manual entry for, I just pulled up the tax bills on the size and look what they actually charged. Gotcha. You, the thing that you raised, the question that you raised about why isn't the number at the top the same as the number at the bottom, I agonized over that for years, and I'm not sure that I ever came up with an actual reason why it was. You know what? If I did, I forgot. What number at the top and number at the I'm, bottom? I'm glad I had the only one. So, so, so at the very top, if you look at right the here, increase, right. Wait, hold on. to be raised by taxes. Yeah. Line line number yeah, not to be raised by tax five. It versus... doesn't match with the actual. If you look at the one actual thing. tax chart, 
way at the bottom. Yeah. Right. Those numbers don't match. Five thirty-one. You would think five. you would think they would both be two point five percent or two point six percent, whatever it is. Well, yeah. Tom's main not. Tom's main land tree got us mm -hmm. to two point five, right? I just can't. I'm not seeing them. Yeah. I don't understand why this percent change is so far different. Like this is needs to be based on this, right? This is what we're proposing for a tax rate mm -hmm. based on grand list. This is what last year's actual tax rate was. Mm -hmm. And this is what the percent change is. But this is percent change on this number. Hold on, I have to go look at it. But I hear you. I hear you. So I've the salary and salary This is a percentage, not a dollar. I must have something wrong because I've got one point five percent even if I do come out. And you do a hundred and ten. Mm -hmm. You're not about to tax the goods before. No, I didn't back up. You have to do the warning to be fine. Then you got to add 3,000. I've already done that. 31.94. Okay. I yeah. just ran it up. But I do need to back up. So, what are you coming up with with all those changes at the top on line mm -hmm. five? <coughs> Column M. Are you at 2.5? And on the bottom, after changing the salaries for two and a half percent, and after adding the child care tax, maybe the state child care tax, I'm at the top. I'm at two point six. Mm -hmm. I don't really know why. And at the bottom, I'm at, at two point seven six five. That's very confusing. I know. You would think they would tell us something, but they're not for some reason. I cannot for the life of me remember why. My, so we, sometimes the actual amount raised in taxes because of rounding is higher than the calculated amount. If you're looking at a percentage of a figure that's okay. six figures. Yeah. Versus one that's two figures. Yeah. And so when we go the way up to the top, yeah, you, we're talking about at 2.6%, we're, we're comparing um, several million dollars. Yeah, 2.08 2 .08 million versus 2.19 million. And at the bottom, we're comparing three digits, four digits. 8.88 cents. That's my yeah. gut. And the, and the actual still could be the same. But. Yeah. <laughs> I can't other, otherwise you can't I can't make sense of it myself. Well, and um I mean did you enter the lodge grand list? Because the lodge grand list changing will actually change that tax rate percentage change. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that might be it. Yeah. That might be the because if we're not comparing the same grand list, it'll just kind of blow it. Well, the grand list that's in there right now is last year's grand list. There's no growth in the grand list. If anything, it'll decrease. Yeah, it'll decrease. There's your tax well, reduction might. for next year. It might. I mean, you know, you would normally have about a 1% increase in the grand, 1% to 2% increase in the grand list. And, yeah. So if the loss of houses is more than 1%, yeah, it'll decrease. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the budget. Everybody else is. I'm well, not bad yeah. to the capital equipment reserve fund. <laughs> that's a, just this year. Yeah, There's not enough added like this year. We can keep adding day. it year over that year. That won't take place until at least June 30th. And you guys are going to have a brand new, well shined up capital budget plan for us, right? Hopefully <laughs> by then, yeah. That's part of our homework, Tom. We're going to start buying Rolls Royce. One could argue that there's too much capital. Sir. So I would move the budget 
with the changes that we've approved tonight contingent upon <laughs> final review by uh no by date by time are you talking about a person yeah a person uh, by susan tinker second mm -hmm. would that be your recommendation rosemary let susan Take a look at it if you can. Well, she yeah. sounds like she's pretty out straight, though. I talked to her too last Friday. Well, let's. Could I, could I change my motion to office staff, some designated office staff person? Okay. Preferably Susan. Yep, yeah, so she's seconded. She's done it before, so she's good at it. It wouldn't take her that long to. Go through it, but if she's not heavy around, she's not heavy around. She's really meticulous. She's and she has doing like a stuff and eyes getting that town report report together. And you've got, you've got what till you have another seven days, days basically. No, on the 29th. Yeah. Today's the 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. I have to go to the 29th. Which is a Monday. Monday. Yeah. So you've got <laughs> five days, basically, to pull things together. <clears throat> I already seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, let's have it. Can you send that to me, Tom? So I have like a final. Uh, did you send it to all of us? Yes. I think that's. And... Oh, I definitely. <laughs> <laughs> if I have time, which I can't commit to, I'll look at it too. Oh, but I just can't commit. I mean, meaning like formulas and that kind of stuff. Okay. So we only care about Sorry. three down, right? What? Okay. Approval of the warning of town meeting. Um, I have a question. Well, first of all, I have a couple of comments. The first is that we have a, there's a typo on the first paragraph where it says local time and for the time. Are you looking at the paragraph first? Yep. Yeah. So it's it's um, March 5th, 2024 at 9 o'clock mm -hmm. in the forenoon local time, it should be. Right. Um, and one other just like copy editing thing, I think in Article 10, where it says um, the VSA, you know, uh, 2804 to be funded by any one by any one or a combination of I think that first item should be a dedicated budget line because I read it I'm on article 10 I read it a few times and just read dedicated line and thought you know what line I think we just say budget that's all like the like the following um, item says Dedicated budget line. I do have another question. Um, we haven't had any re uh, requests for appropriations. We usually get like 10. Uh, new petitions? No. Not new petitions. Only for new petitions. Only for new. So, what about the like Salvation Farms and? We barely Oh, it's already in there. Oh, we went back and forth on this like two years in a row. Yeah, we did. I lost every year. Yeah, you can imagine it. I mean, mine was to have the voters approve it, every, approve it, listed out, but. Nobody likes that idea. Can we focus on the warning right now, Mark? We can definitely talk about that. Titles. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, getting to the meat of it. Can you tell me what your what your concern or issue was with our? It was just that I think that the very first, after combination of colon, 
I think that very first item should just say a dedicated budget line. Just insert the word budget. You got it. Yeah. Something. Space to come on below it. Oh, uh, in front of me. Um, with regard to Article Nine, Rosemary has pointed out to me today on that one that I think is really valuable for all of us to think about and remember. Um, the previous select boards, by job description, had restricted the constables' law enforcement uh, powers and duties, but that was not by vote of the voters. So in essence, if one of the constables decided to put themselves through the Brandon Training School, um, you know, the law enforcement school, and bought their own car and their own blood light and their own AK-47, technically, they could do, they do law enforcement. So this really sort of codifies the action of a prior select board in, you know, I don't know, 20 years worth of, uh, probably oh, yeah. 20 years worth of um, pr actual practice. Yeah. So okay. the constables didn't do well. I mean, I support it. I'm supportive of that. Yeah. yeah. Really. It's but, just, it's, if anybody asks us, I think it'd just be good to be able to say, you know, we're really kind of codifying what public <laughs> select boards have done. Yeah. So backing up further, I thought we were nixing Article 8. Eight. Which one's Article Eight? Names. Oh yeah, I did too. Oh yes. I was yeah, surprised to see that. I like working from the back. Part. Partly because um, there's a pretty good question as to whether or not we did that in the right section. <clears throat> but and they didn't ask us either. No, so, no, there was no request. Yeah. Oh, and they get a tax bill for. I'm coming here. They're going to get a tax bill. They built it into their budget. Okay. I talked to Scott Griswold and he said, Oh, I tried reaching out to him. He never responded to me. I'm glad you talked to him. Sorry, what did he say? Scott? Yeah. He said they built it into their budget. They feel that it's appropriate to just have it. I did a spreadsheet on it and what did we, what we were going to save a pretty minimal amount of money if yeah. they did the tax exam. It's going to make a yeah. huge difference. But it's, um, yeah. it's in their budget. Yeah, budget. It's in their budget. And if they want to ask us next right. year, they certainly can. Yeah. Article 10. Now that we're jumping around. Uh, shall the town establish a reserve fund to be called a paving reserve fund to be used for paving and maintenance of highways? This I had a question on. <laughs> because in essence, Yes, we do spend the most amount of money on highways, but if we were to repave the library parking lot or the municipal parking lot or any other non-highway, this reserve fund would not, in my mind, read that. That allowed. kind of paving would come out of building the grounds? I don't know. Well, even if, okay, maybe we should add buildings and grounds to the surplus list. What do you mean? I mean, I mean to the funding list. If we have a dedicated line or the urine balance from a paving budget line, we maybe we should add or a urine balance from a buildings and ground budget line. No. Well, I guess why not? Don't we? I know you spent on paving like our parking lot, make sure parking. Does that come out of paving or does that come out of building some grounds? Yeah, I understand that. Well, with you being the treasurer, I'm really leaning on you. It's so, be a highway paving yeah. or a parking. So the question is: Is this reserve fund for paving, or is it for paving highways? It looks like it's for paving highways. Yeah, is that the intent? That's my question. And it's also maintenance because I think that ask was to be able to take the two line items, yeah. capital paving and maintenance paving, roll them 
to that capital. So Jason had to do like a project on one of these small roads where he could just do asphalt ceiling, but it's still like a five thousand dollar job. Came up mid year. Now we can pull out of the reserve fund the five thousand, and then it doesn't cause us to go over budget or whatever. I got it. Is yeah. there any world where this isn't roads? I think highways pretty well defines it. And... I understand, but we're writing it now. Which we leaves the opportunity to change it if we wanted to. Because paving is expensive. It's crazy expensive. Um, so, how about if I we. I mean, the library wasn't too, was that 12500 a couple of years ago? But the municipal parking lot's not going to be cheap. Yeah. And it's a mess. But Library Road is actually a town. The parking lot is not. How about if we highways or we could strike highways and say paving and paving maintenance and not refer to highways at all? I'm pretty sure you're you need to recuse yourself from your conversation. Would that would that cover what you I so candidly, I don't really have a Horse pulling me either way very hard. Right, I'm, I'm gonna make a motion question. to let's be it longer though. <laughs> I'm gonna make, he's got a horse. I'm he's gonna make a motion. Um and which would be to modify the language of Article 10 so that um after paving and we would insert the word paving. So it would read for paving and paving maintenance and strike of highways and that will still be in accordance with 24 BSA yes because the 24 BSA is the <laughs> section that talks about setting up a reserve fund perfect and and do we want to add any other budget lines as a funding source or no oh sorry you have a motion uh is there a second oh uh, can we just make a motion on the full slate we we'll make quite a few changes okay yes like does that make sense yeah let's, okay talk, it through. Okay. Yeah, let's yep. talk it through the rest of the way okay and then we can read it out yep <clears throat> okay so do we want to add another budget line yeah what in, in article 10 no yes. no 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 she's talking another okay can i just talk for myself Yes, of course. That'd be lovely. Um, I'm asking if we want to add another budget line surplus to the funding for Article 10. Because Rosemary was suggesting that maybe we sometimes use buildings and grounds to fund things like parking lots. I mean, I am not in favor of that. You're not. Cool. Are you? I think with the change that I just proposed, it would allow us to pull money from this fund. But we need that's not the same as use. So you the change you just made was about use. The question I have, and I'm not suggesting we should do this, by the way, I'm just asking. The thing that I'm asking about is the funding source, not the so use. My understanding that the article to say why you're where you're funding it from is only relevant in the first year you fund it. But the select board has authority to fund reserve funds with any of the amount of unexpended funds. The budget lines don't matter. The voters only vote on the final number. What the select board does with that number is up to the select board. And the budget is just a guideline. And so this only this only ties you to how to fund it this first time. But next year, the fund is reserved, the fund is created, and the select board has unexpended funds. How they choose to use those unexpended funds isn't dictated by the, by this. So for the use is separate for the yeah, funding. The, funding. the funding of it, though. But I think how you fund it is only relevant to the first time, the first year. I don't think so. I don't because the budget lines aren't statutorily responsible. There's no responsibility. To okay, wait, wait, wait. Can we just make a clarifying statement? You're saying that the reserve fund, if it's funded by the budget, it doesn't matter what line within the budget. But the thing is, with reserve funds, you have to specify how you're going to fund them. 
forever. If I, was I, this, I would say with <clears throat> with a unexpended funds equal to the amount of X, you know, and that amount of X would be those two lines. To put money in it initially. Yeah. And then after because all the all the select board is responsible for is the bottom line that's on your tax bill. You know, and then how you spend that. You could spend it all on building a new building. No, we can't. Well, Absolutely not. I don't think you're responsible to follow the budget line by line. But you cannot spend a reserve fund for a purpose oh, other than what the fund is. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about what you spend. So funding a fund is different than spending a fund. So we agree that we're going to spend it on paving and paving maintenance. But what the difference about trying to add lines to how you fund it, that's not, there's no statutory restriction on that. So even if it's, that's only how you fund it that first year. In future years, the select board decides what to do with unexpected funds, and they can put that in any reserve fund they want. With unexpended funds, yes. But I like the dedicated line item in the language. But it does say, or reservation of year-end budget surplus. So, yeah, I think I think we're saying the same thing. Maybe absolutely. I'm wrong. Yeah. yeah. So at the end of the year, if you have stuff in the building ground, you can throw that right in. Yeah. So that's what I was getting at. Why I didn't want to add buildings and grounds into the way of funding this is because if we had year-end surplus, future select board <laughs> would have the authority to pr propose to the voters where to put that surplus, and they could propose putting it in this fund. Am I making sense? I think so. Yeah, it makes sense. But you already had my answer. I'm not in favor of it. Shane? No, that yeah. makes sense. Mark? You're not in favor of what? Adding buildings and grounds to the wording up uh, on the top. Well, I mean, if we're going to talk about just using budget, uh, unallocated budget funds, then it should just be generic about the budget. Well, I like I like to highway budget line items. Unspent balance, the highway paving line items, then year end surplus, which is what it says now, right? Year end balance and paving line items. Or reservation of the RF budget surplus. And then it has a generic, a dedicated budget line item. Yeah, which we currently don't have, but that mm -hmm. would, I mean, there's no reason why, if we decide we want to do that at some point in time, we could. It's fine with me. Yep. Okay. But. <laughs> okay. So right now we have shall the town establish a reserve fund to be called the paving reserve fund? to be used for paving and paving maintenance in accordance with the 24 VSA 2804 to be funded by any one or a combination of a dedicated budget line item, year end with year end um, with a space in between balances uh, from paving budget line items or reserve uh, or reservation of year end budget surplus. I think that's fine. Yeah. Someone want to make a motion? Um, I, can we just update the whole warning as amended? Yeah, we're taking one. I thought we were taking them all together. We're making a change to the okay, that's fine. first sentence. We're mixing Article 8, changing Article 10. Okay. Is there any, any other discussion on any other articles? Yes. No. Do we need two more? What? Do we what? what? Be specific. So, Article... 11 it was put in with a petition uh, yep prepare or have prepared and act upon a preliminary merger for the village of johnson we need a way to fund that my proposal is an article stating something didn't you email something out about the duncan I did, and my my thought process was to have a separate article, a new Article 12, which would be something along the lines of the total voters approve a sum of money not to exceed X dollars 
and those dollars don't necessarily have to be taxed. So it could be ARPA funds or reserve funds or surplus funds. They don't have to be tax dollars. Um, but the other piece that I think is really important is what? making it contingent upon the village voters approving the same or similar article at the village annual meeting. Yeah. Okay, I, can we just finish the thought though? So you're saying shall the voters approve up to X dollars for the purpose, the purpose of, of creating article um, it would be Article 10 if we remove Article 8, but right. implementing the article above contingent on the voters of the village of Johnson approving a similar article. Sounds like you got my email. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I was reading it. I was looking for it. I can, so my I proposal would be that we take Duncan's Council. proposal. But I honestly think that there's no way we can financially fund this without the tax payers approving an amount to be raised by taxes in that article. I think I think that's you have to put the petitioned article on, right? But I think the second article I I would probably suggest shall the taxpayers raise seventy five thousand dollars to be funded into to, to be raised in taxes for the purpose of <laughs> A merger study to be placed in the whatever fund Rosemary suggests right now, um, contingent upon voter approval at the village meeting. So that way, like you have a specific dollar amount that the voters know that, like, if you're saying, "Hey, we're putting a 2.5 percent increase forward," and the voters know if they pass, <laughs> they're increased. They're choosing to increase your tax rate rather. You know, I think that's really important so that they're in control of that tax rate, and then. You're telling them where it's going to be stored, so they know that it's going to be stored for a specific purpose, contingent on the village meeting. Is that um, is that number based on anything? So you, you could, yeah. I mean, you can use ARPA money, but then I guess it, my my fear is right. It's like when you have these big emotional gains, it's like you almost want the voter to be in control, right? And I guess they could vote to use ARPA money. But then they're taking away from something else. Whereas if this is like a new task, should they fund this new task? You know, it's kind I of think it's fairly dumb to specifically refer to ARPA. Yeah, I don't need The only reason for that is if we get the EDA grant, we will have ARPA, excess ARPA funds available. But if we don't get the EDA grant, mm -hmm. we have committed as a board previously to spend the ARPA money as part of the grant match for the, the industrial fund. So I think that money's already committed. I don't know. I think it is, and we're just talking about $70,000 in cash flow that we didn't budget for <laughs> at the beginning of this meeting. And we may also have money coming in from a paving grant that wasn't. Yeah, maybe we might have a bad mud season and spend $70,000 in material oh, two yeah. weeks. Two inches of snow on the weekend. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of things that could happen. A medium, you know. Um, so uh, I'm in agreement of seventy five thousand dollars. If everybody else is, I think it needs to be. I think it needs to be pretty much what exactly what Duncan wrote, <laughs> with an amount not to exceed seventy five thousand dollars. If you yeah. say that it's by be raised by taxes, then I think that almost requires us to raise the money by tax it does and add it to the tax rate. Whereas if it's approved at town meeting, that would give us enough it would give us the period of March 5th to July, whatever, when the tax rate is set to go out with an RFP to find out what the cost is. And by that time we would also know whether the village voters approved it and whether they're willing to contribute some money towards it. Um, but if we knew that it failed that village, we wouldn't include it in our tax we rate that's set on July right. 1 either way. Right. Yeah, makes right. no point. Um, I, I guess not saying to be funded by an increased tax rate, whatever, leaves a lot of gray area for the voters. And well, if they're approving a sum of money, then it, we, we can add it. Can we say potentially raised by, by taxes or something like that. Because to just approve a sum of money, I think is- And where are we coming up to $75,000? Well, 
I, 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 yeah. Drop of the hat. Uh, I got a updated uh, cost estimate from CGR. Not saying that we would go with them, but do you remember January last year? Right. There was a cost yeah. estimate. And their updated cost estimate was you really put me on the spot here. Sixty-two five. Oh okay. yeah, sixty-two thousand five hundred with an additional seventy-five hundred dollars per public meeting. Oh. Very good for chance. Very good chance that we'll have an extra one. So the full cost of it would be around seventy thousand dollars. And to say not to exceed seventy-five. It'd be several years. Now, this is, that's for both charges, right? Like that 62.5 number that, that they're talking about for the town and village to split that amount or? That's the cost for a merger plan. I don't think they would care if Donald Trump would that's, that's just. That's right. tough. To answer your question, I think it's tough. That's what, that's what I'm getting at is, yeah. I mean, could we reduce our not to exceed number to 50 grand with the expectation that the village is going to is that an expectation if the voters, well, if whoever submitted the petition wanted it to be fair, I guess they could have been their petition written, the town pays for half. Um, if the village gets one that requires them to pay for half, sure, maybe. But at this point, do we want to protect the voters and do what they'll potentially tell us to do? Or do we want to assume that the village will pay for half? I want to assume that. Thank you, Rosemary. And they don't have any money, right? They don't. <laughs> well, they could have another article. But they could add it to their tax rate, and we could pay it as a village. They, because they don't have any money doesn't mean that they don't have the ability to raise the money. And then we're saying we're doing the same thing twice. With all the expenses the coming down the pipe. I, yeah, I'm not sure that I would say that they should be obligated to pay 50%. I'd be happy if they paid 25% right. for the cost. Okay, here's what I wrote. I just modified a little bit at the end because <clears throat> I just want to make sure we're referring back to the uh, article. So, shall the voters approve up to $75,000 for the purpose of Article 10, contingent on voters of the Village of Johnson approving a similar article to Article 10? I think we need to add that, a similar article to Article 10. So it doesn't end at a similar similar article. That's it. Yeah. Just for um, you know, on that discussion about will the villages do it off the bat? I guess I get it. They know in theory spreadsheet on potential cost scenarios. Right. And, you know, it's really a big question. I compared the village grand list to the town grand list. If you compare village <laughs> to town, it's 20, it's 25%. Right. For the village. Grand, grand list to grand list. Yeah. Grand list to grand list. If you look at the town population, um, the, the village population is 38% of the total population. Which and is probably at, reduced right now. What's that? Which is probably reduced right now. Could be, yeah. I think the grand list is probably the cleanest, right? Grand list is a good one. Just by way of comparison, I looked at, you know, you're going to get the, the the thing that grows my rate. Well, I, you know, I, I'm I'm paying for it as a town taxpayer too, um, as a village taxpayer. Well, we if you look at the village um, fire department, <clears throat> and I, I didn't spend a lot of time on this, so I don't know if it's accurate or not, but the total village fire department budget is 188000 um, the town share of that last year was 97,111, which means that uh, if you use the same ratio of the grand list, the village taxpayers paid out of that 97, they paid 25,000. Okay. And 72 was paid by just the town grand list. Oh, I see. Yeah. Taxpayers. Did you take out the other two? <laughs> Well, I did that. Um, so if you look, if you look at the column C, um, it's the fire fire department revenue, and that one thirty six eight twenty six is Johnson, Waterville, and Belvedere. 
So I subtracted that from the total village budget. And I came up with the village actually is paying 51995 of the village fire department budget, which ends up being basically, they're, they're basically paying 40.82% of the village budget through their town taxes and their village tax. So just how complicated this is. I know, <laughs> I know. But but this, I mean, this, like I said, I I personally could be okay with a contribution of twenty five or thirty percent. As opposed, I think fifty percent is just it's it's yeah, it's just isn't the and two thirds and a third kind of splits everything that you have right down the center. Yeah, that's a conversation, I guess for different day but and then there's the potential that if if there was a merger i think the village taxpayers may well be the bigger beneficiaries right of merger so you know somewhere between 25 and 30 percent doesn't seem like a big ask to me for them to contribute to the total cost so what do we okay. say are we saying that a merger plan will cost roughly seventy thousand, and we want to budget 66 percent of that 70% of that? We're not budgeting it. But... Well, uh, in the article, proposed not to exceed, or do we just... I think we, I think we have to put the proposed not to exceed at the actual cost, because, and then in the event the village doesn't come to anything. <clears throat> well, if the village folders decide not to, well, I mean, they, 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 anyway. they didn't so, to, right? But yet, there's not, now you have two boards disagreeing on what the percentage is, like... If the voters want to do this, they should be prepared to pay the whole price, right? You know, I, like that—that's what I, my opinion is. So, so let me let me lay out a scenario and ask what you think would happen. So, let's say we put the existing article and the uh, funding article on our ballot uh, that says we are going to, you know, get authorized to do the study and we're going to fund it for this amount. The village puts just the first article on their ballot saying they're going to be authorized to prepare the plan, but they don't put any funding on there. Are we then required, obligated to move forward with coming up with a plan on our dime because we put funding forward and they didn't? That's the scenario I'm worried about. Well, uh, as a village voter, I'm going to try to make sure that doesn't happen, but I think the fact that they're this is happening without the collaboration ahead of time it, it creates problems and i think if it's unclear on the warning and then you have two village two boards that have a history of disagreeing usually over money <clears throat> this is another opportunity that could stop the voters intent solely because of a disagreement and the voters intent is to is to explore this right and so how do you how do you fund that and it should just be clear so they know when they're voting on this it's going to happen right like well, I don't think we can assume what the village voters are going to do. I don't think it's more of that. Correct. Right. Right. Well, we even know what article is going to be cost. Absolutely. That's that's, that's really the crux of the issue. Um, so I, I don't know if the village has gotten a petition similar, but I would hope if they did, whoever was filling out that petition watched this meeting, understood that there's funding needed. So what do we carry? And I think everybody in this room is responsible when a petition comes in and to, to suggest shared funding based on this spreadsheet or something, right? Like it's on us here right now to make sure that it's fair and that you're advocating for for the residents and of the town that we represent too. You know, we have to represent the village. Exactly, we do. We do. Yeah. 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 And I think um, the village is going to have the same. I don't see why it would. Um, and if you want to go ahead and put, put it down, have the town fund the whole thing, then maybe that's the fair way. The fair way to do it. Then each person has a fair share. <laughs> and um, can I interject a little bit? Uh, yeah, that, that would be there. <laughs> um, just so you know, if the town fully funded this, that will. 
be over 3% above what we were haggling over to get to 2.5. Uh -huh. It'll be a larger increase than I expect you'll be very supportive budget. of it. It's, it's the people's meeting. They can do right. what they, they want. Do it. Yeah. If they want a 6% increase to taxes. Are we going to do anything with articles? With this particular article? What I wanted to get to was how much do we want to write? I believe that it needs to be funded through raising taxes, which is fine. Do we want to carry 70, 75, 60? That's what we're talking then, about. So I don't think we need to specify that it's paid for by raising taxes. And I think setting it at 60 would be sufficient. And yeah, yeah. Can you get that the, the village has a similar petition to what? So, so, so you don't think it's? Are you making the motion that the, the article read is mm -hmm. not to exceed sixty thousand? Uh, I guess I can make that motion. Sure, if it moves things along. I'm fine with sixty thousand. Just I'll second. I'm you just making a motion, but you seem like before you wanted to just we were yeah, we were gonna take them all as a slate, yeah. So well, but this one's a little bit thank you, Dad. I, I yes, I would propose we we set it at sixty thousand for uh the amount amount to exceed. What is it? Yeah. Yes, the, it will is yes. it being clear and transparent to the voters, cutting the line that says to be raised by taxes. I don't think, or potentially raised by taxes. I don't think that's necessary. I just don't think it's necessary. I mean, we we do, we don't necessarily have to raise it from taxes. But in all likelihood, where do you think it's coming from? Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we just say that? That's where it's going to come from. Right. So it's it's going to come say from that, tax money. Why wouldn't we say, shall the voters approve up to whatever number to be raised by taxes for the purposes of our for the purpose of Article 10. Could we do that last year with the Committee of the Economic That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Just, that, just said, will the voters approve the sum of money? Right. If we're doing it specifically for this one, for some reason, then, you know. I would have proposed, I do too. But I, I just, I don't think it has ever been included in the language for, no, I don't remember it for the recreation. We can't be transparent about it. I would ask the question of why there is a push to be transparent about it now where there wasn't before. Uh, I've been on the board for two years last year. You learn a little bit every year, right? You're always trying to do the best you can for the voters. I don't see where it would hurt to be a little bit more transparent. But hard to get from me if that's uh... so. The article last year on the economic development professional was shall the voters authorize the town? To raise, appropriate, and expend up to fifty thousand for the purpose of hiring okay. or contracting. So let's do I that. Raise at least says you're going to raise your tax rate. <laughs> I'm fine with that. It's at least I'm good. I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with you know what I'm saying? the same language that we used. To so raise, think, appropriate, and what? And spend. Well, that was last year's article. I did not say it was not perfect, but it was raise, appropriate, and expend. Okay, so that would read, shall the voters approve to raise, appropriate, and expend up to, hold on, sorry. Okay, shall the voters approve. Uh, so, so this is where shall the voters authorize the town of Johnson to raise, appropriate, and expend. Yeah. Up to sixty thousand dollars for the purposes of for the purposes of the larger plan. Yeah, uh, contingent upon the village dealio. I, I'm copacetic with that. The village approving a similar a similar article, <laughs> but not necessarily. I mean, I can see it passing the village without them raising any taxes. Without them, what raising raising the money? Yeah. Right, it's, that's where we we're talking unless about. Unless the article that is submitted requires them. Yeah, if whoever do is doing articles, 
that could be done. I hope whoever that is is watching. Be nice Remember to be a little Well, we're eliminating Article 8, right? Yes. So Article 9 becomes Article 8. This will be Article 11. Yeah. And Groot's ready to go. Oh, actually. Well, Groot's going to have to wait. <laughs> well, if you look at Article 12, it's the same language. So the village of Johnson vote to raise appropriate expense. Fifty million dollars I like that. Oh. Is there a squirrel out there? Can't there. Is, is everybody happy with that wording? Or do you want to read it one more time? We're reading it. Well, more than double our tax rate instantly. No, at 60,000. Okay. Shall the voters authorize the town to raise, appropriate, and expend up to $60,000 for the purpose of Article 10, contingent on the voters of the village of Johnson approving a similar article to Article 10? I like it. Oh. What does it mean? It means whatever. Or does it mean? Wait, never mind. Uh, the, the article that we got. Article 10 is um, Shall the voters of Johnson authorize their select board to prepare or have prepared an act upon a preliminary plan for the merger with the village of Johnson in accordance with the uh, provisions set forth? Well, article 11 refers to the village passing the merger. Similar to similar. 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 No, correct. But I think the stimulus would allow flexibility to add the funding piece into our village article. But if, if they, they don't, don't still, if they, they don't, we're still going to go ahead and move forward. Yeah. Well, you mean if the voters don't approve a similar article at village meeting? If they include the nuclear plan, but not the funding. Is that similar? Oh, we got to find a town council for less than 60,000. Or, well, and it'll spend money out of the account that we don't have one in. CGI has the CGI, right? That's um, CGR. CGR. Yeah. Either way. Um, they were pretty clear, if I remember correctly, that they really want both parties to be invested if they're going to come back and, and do this. And I think that would maybe be an indicator for them that one of the two parties isn't invested. So, well, you know, I would like to you know, full disclosure just let everybody know that I contacted Alan Gould of Municipal Resource. Group. I think it just said, you got a ballpark idea of what a merger plan might cost. And they, he said, yep, you just better budget at least 50 k so I think, you know, I think 60, if we put together an RFP and put it out, I mean, I think our purchasing policy probably. Well, we would have to put together an RFP, anyway. yeah. I just wanted an updated, yeah. escalated number for what it would be yeah. from somebody that was familiar with the situation. No. So I, I think if we use 60, we're probably within the realm of reality. Yeah. So I... Or are you writing it again? I'm rewriting it on one paper so that I have it with me when I go to sign. Can I motion to approve the warning with the amendments made tonight? Can we just clarify those amendments just one last time? Uh, spelling error in the opening statement, time to time. Article 8 is removed. Article 10. Article 9 becomes Article 8. Yeah. Not Article 8. Eight. Article yeah. 10 becomes Article 9, and then the Article 10 that's becoming Article 9 reads, shall the town establish a reserve fund to be called Paving Reserve 
the paving reserve fund to be used for paving and paving maintenance in accordance with 24 VSA subsection 2804 to be funded by any one of the contributions of a dedicated budget line item uh, here, space and surplus yeah, or balances yeah. from paving budget lines or reservation of year and budget surplus. Article 11 then becomes Article 10. The new Article 11 will read. Shall the voters authorize the town to raise, appropriate, and expend up to $60,000 for the purpose of Article 10, contingent on the voters of the village of Johnson approving a similar, similar article to Article 10. Yeah, this is a practical matter if the voters don't approve Article 9, um, then we pass on the over. Yeah. Um, this is a weird thing for me, but I think it should open up with shall the voters of the town of Johnson authorize just because that's what everything else says. Whatever. Yeah. It would be consistent with the other um, article. And then. Thanks, uh, by the way. I ran out of space. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, and the remainder of the articles are fine. So that is my motion. Did you get all of that, Donna? I think so. You don't need the exact wording of every article you read on, right? Since you don't have the exact wording of all the other ones you ever had. I have. I mean, I, I guess I have. I mean, I motion to approve with the amendments, and I listed the or I listed the changes. Yeah, and, and I've, I've described in in the text of the motion. So. What you need a um, copy of all of the like the previous text of the articles. We have to make sure I'm exactly talking about, but but like I said, I mean, there's a bunch of articles that the exact wording that we need wouldn't be in the motion at all because they're not being changed, right? So we could, uh, well, you, 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 you guys decide what you need. We could show you a copy of the Bible. My motion was to approve it for the changes tonight, and I listed the changes tonight. Is there a second? Second. So, <clears throat> any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, and you got to fill in the budget amount. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm still This is the final. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can last the one that's Can you send it on the Bible? I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm a single parent and all of them. Oh man. About time. It's like a dream. What do you mean about time, Mark? <laughs> an awesome parent, thank you. Do we have anything else to cover or are we adjourning? I <laughs> I don't think it's on the agenda. Rosemary, did you do you have the you make all those changes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh crap. Okay. Are we Can adjourned? I... What? Well congratulations, everybody. Hang on. Uh I've made a motion and I might pull back. I really need clarity on. And tax anticipation reserve fund, and if we need an article, it's not. We're going to be running up on tax flow issue real quick. <laughs> is it in a separate bank account or is it? It is. It is. So, leave that we're going to get a loan if we have money anyways. Seems like Hopefully we'll get some reimbursement. Yeah. I mean, if you're comfortable with it, that's fine. You know, just, and if you're wrong, you'll just have to refund the account after you file funds. Yeah.
Hey, back to the tarp. Right. Remember, there's what? What are you talking about? An article on the tax and suspicion reserve fund. Yeah, I know. Uh, all right. That's what I was gathering. I did not. Okay. Meeting adjourned.